Kusu Sangpola and welcome to all our viewers. I'm Sunam Chodin, Freshwater Program Lead from WW Bhutan Program. To celebrate World Fish Migration Day, we are delighted to bring this very interesting and educational session on pristine rivers, sacred fish, and freshwater biodiversity. We have three presentations, and our first presenter is Mr. Changlu from National Research Center for Riverine and Lake Fisheries, Ha under the Department of Livestock. He will talk about the fishes of Eastern Bhutan. Then our second very interesting presentation uh, will be by Mr. Leto from the Nature Conservation Division, Department of Forest and Park Services, who will talk about pristine rivers and sacred fishes. And the final presentation for this interesting session, I will talk on the freshwater biodiversity, followed by fascinating video from our planet series on freshwater. For any questions and feedback, please put your comments in the chat box and we'll try to answer or we'll get back to you. My name is Chang Lu. I'm working as a senior livestock production officer at National Research and Development Center for River and Lake Fisheries under the Department of Livestock, Minister of Agriculture and Forest. So today I'm going to present on the fishes of Eastern Bhutan and uh, species composition and distribution in Aichu, Manas and Nera Machu River system. Before I go to my presentation, I want to briefly in, uh, introduce the fisheries uh, development in the country. In general, fishery development is divided into two. Uh, there's aquaculture and uh, wild fisheries. And the National Research and Development Center for Aquaculture, Kilifu, looks after the aquaculture development in the country uh, with other two uh, sub-centers. One is uh, Regional Center for Aquaculture, uh, Punsotang, and uh, one is Stout Breeding Center at Ha. And the National Research and Development Center for River and Lake Fisheries have mandated to reach and develop wild fisheries in the country uh, with two other regional uh, uh, sub-centers. Uh, one is uh, Marshir Conservation and Fish Monitoring Center at Harechu, and uh, we also have one uh, Fish Conservation Center at Targetang, Punaka. And uh, guided by our uh, visionary monarch, Bhutan has been very successful in conserve conserving environment and natural resources. And Bhutan's water uh, resources ranges from uh, the small headwater stream in the north to large in the south and uh, include numerous uh, natural lakes. These water resources are spread across uh, six major and three uh, uh, minor river systems. And in addition, the river systems are also home to rich aquatic biodiversity, much of which remains unstudied except for a few independent investigations on fish. Bhutan's rich uh, water resources are being developed through numerous anthropogenic activities like uh, agriculture, hydropower, tourism, and small-scale industries, and which pose threat to the aquatic uh, life, especially. And uh, the development, uh, the threat to fisheries and aquatic system as a whole is one uh, developmental activities, and uh, second is uh, illegal fishing. That comes to climate change, and uh, we also have a tether or life-saving uh, program, which uh, gives threat to the fisheries. Developmental activities include hydropower dams, uh, construction of road, sand stone mining, and uh, river timing. And uh, uh, illegal fishing is uh, increasing in the country uh, with the adv advancement of technology. The trend in illegal fishing also get modernized. People go for unsustainable fishing practices using destructive fishing gears like electric shocker and uh, fish poisoning, river diversion, and all includes in this uh, destructive fishing uh, gears. And uh, the traditional fishing gears are replaced with the modernized fishing gears. And uh, people will also go for the bigger size and uh, they will also not uh, leave the, if the fish is in the energy list or and uh, they will go on fishing. And uh, the last photo here, it gives uh, the, the white bellied heron is trapped in fishing lines. Whereas actually the fishermen, they kept a fishing line for the, to harvest the fish, but uh, the white bellied heron also they feed on the fish and uh, both the fish and the heron were trapped in the line, so which poses threat to 
not only fish, but also the other terrestrial animals. And uh, another threat is the climate change. Due to the climate change, there are some the flash flood and uh, so on. And uh, because of this uh, flash flood, the aquatic biodiversity is uh, destroyed. The last one is uh, the Tether, life-saving program. Uh, Bhutan being a religious country, we have customs of, uh, custom of releasing live animals, including fish, to get married in one's life by saving other life. And uh, when it comes to fish, most of the saved fish species are of uh, exotic in nature, and this may cause a problem in future if things are not corrected in on time. And one good example is uh, this fish red in Funseling sewerage tank. There are uh, potential for wild fisheries development, and uh, definitely one is uh, the recreational fishery to invite uh, uh, the interested anglers. And uh, we also see the room for ornamental fisheries in Bhutan. And uh, the last one is uh, Community Based Fishery Resource Management Program, previously known as uh, Capture Fisheries. To address threats and uh, to capitalize uh, potential of wild fisheries, the National Research Center for River and Lake Fisheries ha, initiated development of national fishery database with the Department of Livestock. The study conducted in two phases, 2013 to 2016, the first phase, and the 2016 to 2019 in the second phase, uh, which was funded by the Bhutan Trust Fund for Environmental Conservation. And the first phase of project, which focused on three major river basin, Wang Chu, Amu Chu, Puna Zang Chu, river basin in the west, collected a total of 104 species, fishy species, belonging to six orders, uh, 16 families, and uh, 47 genera. And second phase of project focused on the river basin of Eastern Bhutan was also completed, and therefore I will be present on the of this uh, Eastern Bhutan uh, biodiversity research. And uh, the objective of this study was to determine species composition and distribution of fish in the rivers of Eastern Bhutan. And uh, to compare the result of this study with the findings of study conducted in the rivers of Western Bhutan. These uh, are the three major river basins that we have studied in our second phase. And uh, these three river ma uh, major river basin was divided into 19 segments, uh, 124 zones, and uh, 496 uh, sampling stations. Sample was done twice in all the stations to obtain representative samples. Uh, different kinds of fishing gates were used. And uh, fish identification was uh, done on site. The fish specimen were preserved in 10% formalin, and fish specimen that were difficult to identify were identified either through consultation with the experts outside or sending them to the uh, partner institute outside the Bhutan. And uh, when it comes to finding, our study reveals that uh, seven orders, 20 families, uh, 53 genera, and 115 species from Eastern Bhutan. And, uh, Family uh, dominance of uh, order, family engineers was also done, and uh, among these, uh, celery formis has the highest family with uh, seven, and uh, cyprini formis has uh, highest genera with uh, 32, and uh, species richness were, were also uh, examined, and uh, among that, 38% uh, uh, of the fish species was recorded from the cyprini day family, followed by 16 uh, from Sisori Day, 11% from uh, Nimajuli Day, and uh, so on. Comparisons were also made between the rivers of uh, uh, river systems, Aichu, Manas, and uh, Neramachu. Among three uh, river systems, Aichu, uh, Aichu was found to be the most diverse river, sy uh, river system, recorded uh, six orders, 18 families, 
41 genus and uh, 79 species, fish species. And uh, Nera Machu has uh, five order, 12 families, uh, 25 uh, genus, and uh, 31 fish species. And uh, when it comes to Manas, uh, we have recorded uh, uh, four order, nine families, uh, 22 uh, genus, and uh, 45 species, fish species, including uh, our endangered tort pitotora. Uh, With this, uh, we conclude here that the uh, Aichu river system has the most diverse fish species compared to Manas uh, river system with 45 and near Amachu river system with 31 species. And uh, we have a uh, few recommendations from these studies. Uh, recommendations are studies may be needed in future to validate uh, the findings of our studies. And uh, 79 fish species is quite significant and uh, therefore irrespective of size and numbers of TV tourists, an equal attention is needed for all the river system in the country. Uh, thank you and Tashidale. A very good afternoon to all the viewers. My name is Letro. I work at the Nature Conservation Division under the Department of Forest and Park Services, Ministry of Agriculture and Forest, Royal Government of Bhutan. To observe the World Fish Migration Day today, I have the privilege of presenting a small talk on the topic Pristine Rivers, Sacred Fishes. Bhutan is a biologically diverse country. So what comes in your mind when you say or hear that our country is rich in biodiversity? Of course, our vast forest coverage, the tigers, elephants, I am quite certain that these are the things that will strike your mind. But this is not inclusive. Most of us are ignoring the essence, real essence of biodiversity, the ecosystem diversity. Like our rich forest biodiversity, Bhutan also has a very rich freshwater ecosystem which actually harbors more life than that of our forests. Starting from the snow clad mountains in the north, the glaciers, the alpine lakes, the streams and rivers beautifully manders our country and the forest ecosystems, adding life and vigor to our livelihoods and national economy. Our river escapes are vast. They are pristine and extremely invaluable. They drive a lot of inspiration, not just physically, but both culturally and spiritually. Unfortunately, not much is known about the diversity of life in our rivers and how they are doing. But amidst an area of life in our rivers, are the fishes and there are sacred fishes known as golden mushy, scientifically known as Tol Putitora. It is endangered in the IUCN red list. Golden mushy are member of the carp family and are, it is a top minnow. It is the largest fish found in Bhutan and lives as long as 25 years. As its size and might, one salient character of golden mushy is that they are long distance migrators and they exhibit phylopathy, the tendency of an organism to stay or habitually return to its actual area. While this scientific information of golden mushir are amazing facts in, it, in, in itself, in Bhutan, it holds a very special significance in our Buddhist beliefs and it is therefore sacred. The golden fish, which is known as Sanya, is one of the eight auspicious signs of Buddhism symbolizing freedom and happiness. As such, despite lacking of detailed study on the golden mashir, the fish has been protected since long before. It is placed under Schedule 1 species of the Forest and Nature Conservation Act 1995, and as such, like all endangered species found in Bhutan such as tiger, golden langur, white-bellied heron, the golden mashir benefit from the strong environmental protection and the religious reverence that we place upon. However, there are a lot of threats that uh, adversely affects the biodiversity and the ecosystem all across the globe. In Bhutan, without ample research and periodic monitoring, it has been difficult in detecting fine-scale changes and scenarios of biodiversity change. And this calls for the need of an overall biodiversity monitoring program across the country. But for the sacred golden mashir, we are glad to have scientific evidences of how they are doing in our pristine rivers, how we should be reacting for its protection. In 2015, under the collaborative effort of Royal Government of Bhutan, WWF Bhutan and the Fisheries Conservation Foundation USA, a groundbreaking research on golden mashir was done through radio telemetry. Over the course of two years, the research team captured 
take and release more than 60 golden machines and 40 chocolate machines. Data sent by GPS tags to the receivers showed that golden machines migrate very long distance, which we have never thought before. They covered distance over 60 kilometers in less than 24 hours, climbing huge rapids. The research also showed that machine migrate up, use warmer, non-snow melt tributaries for spawning, and the in individual fishes return to the exact uh, locations annually. So basically, machines are moving up from the lower tropical warm rivers in February and May, and then they return to the wintering uh, habitat in October and November. Interestingly, it was also found that more than 95% of the machines tagged and monitored didn't move beyond our international boundary, which indicates that they indeed favor our Bhutan's river systems than rivers beyond our border. So it is indication that Bhutan have the potential to serve as last Shangri-La for the conservation of marshes. Nonetheless, our sacred fishes are not devoid of threats. There are evidences of rampant illegal fishing and coming up of dams on the lower stretch of our rivers will block and disrupt the migration pattern of the marshes and therefore also disrupting its spawning activities. This will in the long run have great implications for the long-term survival of marshes in our rivers. Built on these empirical evidences, it is now therefore vital that we put concerted efforts toward its conservation of our freshwater ecosystems in general and golden machines in particular. For example, at the current scenario, our fishing regulations are too broad. Therefore, there is a need for us to delineate the rivers into machine and develop a set of new regulations for these delineated uh, uh, waters. Golden mushroom over its range has been much sought sporting fish, so there is also a potential for us to encourage high-end recreational fishing for mushroom in our rivers, which will also have the potential to derive a lot of ecotourism revenues for our country. While community awareness program should be enhanced, there is also a need for us to encourage community-based capture fisheries so that we can reduce the illegal fishing into the major rivers and encourage people to sustainably harvest the fish from allocated rivers in their local community. Bhutan has built sustainability in its national identity. Therefore, it is possible that we can sustainably harvest the fish through community-based capture fishery programs. Our rangers are patrolling the rivers, so we need to enhance them and equip them with proper gears so that they can perform the patrolling of the rivers properly and for this it is necessary that we establish a cadre of river rangers in Bhutan. While we need to enhance the research on golden machines further, ultimately if we develop a conservation action plan for protection of golden machines, we find a lot of avenues for protection of the entire river ecosystem and freshwater ecosystems in Bhutan. However, in order to carry these actions forward, we need the collaborations and support from a lot of other agencies and our conservation partners. Therefore, I request all the conservation partners to come forward and support the conservation of golden machine in particular and river and ecosystems in general. This way, we can ensure that our sacred fishes thrive in the pristine rivers and our biodiversity conservation unparalleled in the region. Thank you. So, in our final presentation uh, for today, I'm going to talk about uh, the freshwater, the story of freshwater, and why we should care for our freshwater. The story of freshwater is the story of a miracle called life. If you reflect properly, we know that from the ancient wisdom, life manifests when four basic elements which is earth, uh, that's the land, mm, the water, mm, then the fire, uh, which is the sun, and the wind, uh, which is the air, when it comes together, and that is nature. We are made of four elements, and when these four elements come together, that's how we and all beings manifest, and that four elements is the nature. And if you look at our own body, we are also made of four elements, right? We have the earth element, the water, fire, and the wind. 
all these elements makes life possible and at the end these elements dissolve and we go back into nature so nature and us human beings and all the beings that inhabit this planet we are one and we are interconnected and we are interdependent and this is the truth and this is the wisdom that one of the greatest being who lived on this planet over 2500 years ago the one known as the awakened one the buddha who discovered this truth and who realized this truth and who has shared this truth throughout these generations and we are still the followers of that truth so we the human beings and nature we are one and we are connected to each other so i think this is something that we need to reflect on and also interestingly our human body uh is made of almost 60% is water and in the same way the nature has 97% of our planet is also water of course uh, largely it's uh, 70% is um water which includes sea ocean water as well as fresh water and 30% is the land so how much of our planet is fresh water even though we have 97% of a planet actually is sea water and it's salty that means it's not available we cannot uh, use that and it's only 3% of a planet which is fresh water and out of that 3% fresh water less than 1% is available for use as the rest are hidden as polar ice so fresh water is so precious what is available is only less than 1% so which makes fresh water so precious it is more precious than the gold and that less than 1% fresh water is home to over 10% of world species which is 126000 species that depend on this fresh water and use it as their home and human beings we are just one species whereas fresh water is home to 186000 species on this planet so it also belongs to them as well so our survival and well-being depends on healthy fresh water on healthy rivers streams springs wetlands spring sheds water sheds and river basin the entire natural system especially this year 2020 has been a very challenging year and as we have all experienced and we have also it has helped us to reflect how vulnerable we are to pandemics like the coronavirus which has caused so much suffering and pain and we have been resorted to basic remedy of washing hands six times a day and that water for washing hands six time a day it doesn't just come from the tap it comes from our fresh water systems which are so important for the generation of continuous fresh water so fresh water is life it's our life force it's the precious nectar that keeps us all alive but what is happening to our fresh water systems and species are we noticing and heading the warning signs that nature is giving us again and again and especially this year in the wake of the pandemic so the science is also supporting that and the living planet report which is the flagship publication of wwf produced in collaboration with the zoological society of london confirms this fact the living planet report is released every 2 years and it is a comprehensive report that presents the species population trends since 1970 Uh, to 2016 uh, which is uh, for the last 46 years so this report it uh, tracks it monitors the species population trends and it trends of almost uh, 21000 populations of mammals birds fish reptiles and amphibians around the world so the living planet index of this species for the last over 40 years it shows an average 68% decline in the global vertebrate species population which is a bad news this shows that how 
our wildlife species populations are declined drastically over the years. And this is a message that our ecosystems are disturbed and that all is not right. But when you look at the, the freshwater living planet index is even more grim than the overall wildlife index because the freshwater populations has decreased drastically by 84%, which shows that our freshwater biodiversity are more threatened than our terrestrial species. And if you don't act now, this will have disastrous consequences on, on our freshwater systems. So really our freshwater biodiversity is under crisis. Reports have shown that more than 85% of the wetland areas have been lost. We only have one third of the world's longest rivers that are free flowing. There has been 76% decline in populations of migratory fishes and one third of all freshwater species are at the threat of extinction as per the IUCN red list and one fourth of all critically endangered species are the freshwater species. So what does this tell us? This shows that our freshwater biodiversity is in crisis and it needs help. So this is the global distribution of free flowing rivers and um, this um, clearly shows that we have very few uh, free flowing rivers. Most of the rivers are fragmented and um, the rivers which are more than 1,000 kilometers uh, long, uh, they are distributed in very few places. And um, in case of Bhutan, uh, we fall under the medium river category. I think our river would probably be uh, between 100 to 500 kilometers. And as we all know, uh, most of our rivers um, have been used for hydropower development. And we only have very few, uh, I think, rivers um, which is free of um, hydropower and which are free flowing currently. So this is something that uh, we need to think about, whether we want to dam every river in our country, or do we also want to keep some of these pristine rivers free flowing so that we continue to enjoy the ecosystem services and our future generations would be also able to enjoy these free flowing rivers. So what are the main threats causing the drastic reduction in the population of wildlife species? So from the LPI. Uh, the main threats, these are all anthropogenic in nature. Uh, main is the changes in land use, sea use, uh, so including habitat loss and degradation. And uh, in terms of the freshwater biodiversity, it's the fragmentation of river connectivity and water pollution uh, which causes uh, this uh, degradation. And the second one is species over exploitation. So that's uh, a lot of illegal fishing and over exploitation of river resources mm, which also includes sand stones and boulders uh, third one is invasive species and disease um, this is also something that's very uh, important because invasive species uh, it's very bad uh, for our local native species and it causes actually a lot of damage uh, to our freshwater ecosystems and uh, and then of course the pollution and and then climate change are, uh, these are some of the threats uh, for the decline in species population uh, all over the world. And even though these threats are very much at the global level, uh, but from the earlier presentation, uh, in case of Bhutan, I think some of these threats are also applicable, uh, especially when we talk about habitat loss and degradation and habitat fragmentation, uh, illegal fishing and unsustainable use of riverine resources. And also we have the problem of invasive species and our rivers are getting polluted. And of course, uh, we are very much vulnerable to the impacts of climate change uh, because of being in this very ecologically sensitive region, the Eastern Himalayas. So what needs to happen if we care, if we care about our freshwater resources and the valuable ecosystem services that they provide for our country, for our people and our economy? So we need a new deal for nature and people to put nature on the path to recovery and freshwater biodiversity needs special attention because next year in 2021 the world leaders are going to come together and at the convention on biological diversity they're going to frame a new biodiversity framework for the next decade so that's why we need to need to have this new deal for nature and and people and especially for the freshwater biodiversity which has been neglected and which has been clubbed with the terrestrial biodiversity and has received very less attention till now. So this is our opportunity to really come up with a more holistic new deal for nature 
and people which centers around freshwater biodiversity. And this emergency recovery plan for freshwater biodiversity, which WWF scientists in collaboration with a lot of other, other international agencies and universities and thought leaders uh, have come up with. This is the new deal for nature and people component for freshwater biodiversity. So what this emergency recovery plan is proposing is we need to implement the six actions which are very important to bending the freshwater biodiversity curve. So first one is we need to let rivers flow more naturally. That means we should not fragment our river systems, but we need to connect our rivers, let our rivers flow, not dry our rivers and streams with too much extraction for human use, but rather also keeping some water flowing in the river for the aquatic biodiversity. And this requires the implementation of the environmental flows guideline that the National Environment Commission and the stakeholders have uh, developed uh, for Bhutan. Uh, which needs to be uh, implemented uh, strictly. Number two is to improve water quality in freshwater ecosystems. Uh, this is really to address the pollution issues, uh, the solid waste, the liquid waste that our river systems are suffering from. So this is really actions to address that. And the third action is we really need to protect and restore critical habitats, especially the habitats of important and sacred fish like the golden marsher and other endangered freshwater species. Number four is overfishing and unsustainable sand mining and uh, this needs to be managed. Um, overfishing in case of Bhutan happens due to a lot of illegal fishing. Uh, so we know that there's a lot of illegal fishing that's happening and the Marshall uh, research has clearly indicated that illegal fishing is one of the immediate threats uh, to Marshall in Bhutan and which needs to be addressed um, in addition to the hydropower. And the fifth action is to control, prevent and control uh, invasive species like I already mentioned earlier. And the final action is we need to keep some rivers free flowing and free of dams um, before it's too late, before we lose all our rivers. So really, uh, I think the free flowing rivers, why is it so important to free flowing rivers? The river is not only like for hydropower alone, there are so many other values of free flowing rivers and these are uh, some of the important values and services that free flowing rivers provides. Uh, of course, biodiversity conservation, there's this, the, it uh, provides healthy floodlands, which we use for agriculture. Uh, most of our river valleys, our cities and our towns, most of them are on the river valleys. And uh, cultural values, recreation, uh, also help in uh, stocking of fish, uh, and then sediment transfer. So there are so many important uh, values of free-flowing rivers uh, which we have not yet tapped and there is a potential um, to actually make use of these values uh, if we take a balanced approach and, uh, and if we not just focusing on, on just using the rivers for, for hydropower alone. So in uh, 2021, that's next year, uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity uh, they will, will adopt a new global biodiversity framework as a stepping stone uh, towards the 2050 vision of living in harmony with nature. And, uh, and this is our opportunity uh, to strike a new deal uh, uh, for, for nature and people, and especially for uh, freshwater biodiversity. And, uh, and that is the reason why I think there's this urgency for all of us to come together and uh, to give our voices and give our support towards this cause. And uh, one, I think, good news is that uh, recently uh, the emergency recovery plan uh, has been reflected in the fifth Global Biodiversity Outlook uh, report of CBD, uh, uh, which, is, uh, which is very uh, encouraging. And uh, we hope that uh, next year, uh, when, we, when the world leaders come up with a new biodiversity framework, uh, they will really give uh, uh, attention um, to freshwater biodiversity. So uh, finally, I think uh, we must take care of our freshwater because uh, it is our lifeline. Um, from the mountains to the floodplains, we have to keep them clean, flowing and connected uh, for our migratory fishes, people and our economy. Science also tells us that intact ecosystems are actually more resilient 
uh, to the impacts of climate change than fragmented and degraded ecosystems. And uh, in order to have a happy fish, for ha happy fish, happy people and happy nation, all can contribute to us our overall guiding philosophy of gross national happiness. And for this vision to manifest, it depends on fresh water. Fresh water is, 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 is the foundation on which fresh water and nature are the foundation on which we can have GNH, both for people and for our biodiversity. So it's so important that we really take care of our fresh water and we try to address the threats that our fresh water systems um, are having and are beginning to show some warning signs. And uh, in case of Bhutan, as we all know, even though we have a lot of fresh water resources, most of our drinking water, uh, for drinking water, we depend on our springs and streams. And, um, and most of these spring sources are drying up. I think almost 70% of the spring sources in Bhutan are drying up. And this is a, this is a big concern. And uh, maybe this is an indication that our freshwater systems um, are showing signs of, of warning um, that uh, we need to fix some things. So uh, to conclude, uh, I'd like to uh, once again emphasize the story of freshwater, which is really the story of our life. That is the, the four elements, which is also the four elements of nature, and that is nature. So we and the nature are one, and we are interconnected, and we are not separate, and we need each other to thrive, to survive, and to prosper, but in a sustainable way. So when we understand the connections, uh, we'll appreciate and care, and when we care, uh, we'll stop harming, then our heart opens and love flows. So when that happens, we become a true human being who cares for the happiness and welfare of all other beings. And this is the wisdom that has been passed down from, from the source who is the Buddha. And we are the followers of that source, that great being who walked on this planet more than 2,500 years ago. And as the holders of that special wisdom lineage, it is our responsibility to take care of not only ourselves, but also we care for the welfare and happiness of all beings on this planet, including the migratory fish. So we must work with nature and not against nature. Let the love flow for migratory fish, rivers, natures, and all beings. If you have any questions and feedback, you can type it on the chat, or you can also email to us and we'll get back to you. So next, uh, we have this very fascinating and beautiful video on fresh water, uh, which is just seven minutes, uh, which is part of our planet series. So we hope you'll enjoy. Thank you. We have the ability to ensure that all rivers can reach the sea, that lakes stay healthy and floodplains fertile. We just have to allow fresh water to do one thing, to flow. As it flows, fresh water creates an unbroken cycle across the globe, through the air, across the Earth's surface, and even underground within rock as aquifers. Throughout its journey, fresh water provides three crucial functions for life on our planet including us. Firstly, everything that lives on land, from plants to insects to ourselves, needs fresh water to survive. Secondly, rivers, lakes and other freshwater habitats provide a home for millions of creatures. Finally, as water travels around the world, it carries sediments and nutrients. These form the basis of entire food chains, shape landscapes, and fertilize the places we now farm. All of this can only happen when the freshwater cycle is intact. 
but we've treated fresh water as if it were a limitless resource, part of an unbreakable system. We've peppered our planet with over a million dams and barriers, blocking the flow of thousands of rivers. Even worse, we've extracted more water than the natural cycle can replenish. Currently, humans use over 10 billion tons of fresh water daily. We transport water from where it should be to wherever we want it. We've turned torrents into trickles. When flow is lost, the entire freshwater cycle breaks down. The repercussions are devastating. Rivers dry out. Fish stocks plummet. Crops fail. Drinking water disappears. Our impact is so great that freshwater wildlife is vanishing faster than that from any other habitat. Our challenge is to restore freshwater systems and ensure that everything we do with freshwater allows it to continue flowing. We can start with optimism because we are at a pivotal moment. For the first time in history, it's becoming cheaper to use renewable energy like wind and solar than to build mega hydropower dams. As a result, nations are investing in these green energies which don't force out communities, flood pristine forests, or block the river's flow. Some dams, however, may still be needed in the future to help us extract and store our water. So let's choose the best location to place them, avoiding main river channels and only where they'll cause least impact to natural freshwater flow. As for our existing dams, wherever they are not functioning or unrepairable or dangerous, we should remove them. The majority of dams, however, will remain, but we can reduce their impacts on freshwater flow. To do this, we need to replicate nature. All rivers have periods when the flow of water is greater. Freshwater pulses caused by meltwater or seasonal rains. We can copy these natural pulses by letting dams release larger volumes of water at the right time. These pulses trigger fish to spawn, disperse sediments and nutrients, and create the natural floods which make wetlands and farmlands so fertile. For many dams, with this single action, we can help freshwater flow more naturally, and that will benefit us and our planet. We should treat freshwater like the finite resource it is. It's more precious than gold. Agriculture and industry, which together use around 90% of all the water we extract, are transforming. Efficient, smart farming can use less water whilst increasing production. We can also choose to plant the right crops in the right place instead of transporting water to where it's scarce. We should ensure that any water we save is returned to the river to safeguard the natural flow. Technology is also helping industry to use, clean and then recycle water back into their system. This circular process can reduce pressure on natural flow, save companies money and even generate clean energy. We put enormous pressure on our freshwater systems, but they still have the ability to surprise us. Given the opportunity, they can recover faster than we had ever expected. 
So just imagine the future when we work with the fresh water flow and not against it. Our rivers, lakes and wetlands and the wildlife in them can become healthy again. The seasonal pulses will benefit us once more, fertilising our farmland. Our freshwater fish stocks will flourish. In that future, even our cities will work with fresh water. They can become like sponges. By building green walls and roofs, permeable pavements, and by restoring riverbanks and wetlands, we'll help protect cities and the billions of people who live in them against flooding. Even better, we'll have more wild spaces and will help bring wildlife into the heart of what most of us call home.